series about inspirational women without talking about a very significant heroine from the 20th century. A woman who stood up and rose up against gender discrimination. And she rallied together a following of women and men across the country in support of a really great cause. Today, I'm going to be talking about Emmeline Pankhurst. Now, Emmeline Pankhurst, she was a political activist, a British political activist, and she was an integral part to the UK suffragette movement. Now, she helped women win the vote in the UK, and she shook up society. She encouraged women to strive for more and become who they deserve to be. But most importantly, she helped women find their voice in a very male-dominated world. Let's find out more. Hold on, what is a suffragette? Before 1900, women in the UK were not allowed to vote. What? Voting is the most important action you can take to change and improve your lifestyle and be a part of decision making that is going to affect your life or your family's life or your community. You should vote if you want a better healthcare, education, recycling, transport, housing. But before 1918, if you're a woman, you weren't allowed to be a part of that vote. Step in the suffragettes. Suffragettes were activists that wanted the right to vote for women. They were known for shaking things up with their militant actions and rebellious ways. These suffragettes, they would change history. Emily was born in Manchester in 1858, at a time when women had no rights, no privileges, no property, and no say in matters that would affect their lives. A woman's role is to find a husband, have children, and serve her family. Of course, Emmeline would do so much more than that, and she would make sure that she wasn't the only one. Emmeline was lucky. She was born into a wealthy family. She would dress in laces and corsets, veils and gloves. She could read and she could write, and she had an inheritance. Of course, that inheritance wasn't for her, oh no. That inheritance was for her husband to spend. If you were a woman in the lower working class, life was much harder. With little money, families would have to send away their children off to factories, some as young as eight. The majority would work in dark and unpleasant factories, a few plagued by disease. Some women would continue working while heavily pregnant, and some would have their babies at work. Underclass women had it even worse off. With no education and no respected jobs available, these women would live and work and die in miserable conditions, and they could do nothing about it. Women are delicate creatures. They are not strong enough to work heavy machinery and not smart enough to understand money and uh, not clever enough to comprehend political strategy. But rumours started to filter through of women beginning to change the rules. Women asking questions like, what if and why not? Women were even rumoured to be dressing as men and living adventurous lives outside the home. Women wearing trousers? Oh my! Rumours started to emerge of women disguising themselves as men to become soldiers or learn medicine or become swashbuckling pirates. Yeah! <gasps> oh how frightfully exciting! In New Zealand, women were even riding bicycles. Women riding bicycles? Preposterous! Bicycles 
are not built for a woman's delicate frame. <laughs> In Emmeline's teenage years, she attended a talk about women's votes, a new idea being celebrated by Lydia Becker, a pioneering activist. It surely cannot be denied that women have opinions of their own on the subject of public interest. There is no real natural difference between the intellect of men and women. Women should be allowed to vote. From that moment on, Emmeline's fate was sealed and she dreamed of a better world, one of equality, where women's voices and work were respected. Emmeline went on to marry a great man, a man who supported votes for women. He loved Emmeline, he respected her, but most importantly, he listened to her. Emmeline didn't want to stay at home and be a housewife for the rest of her life. She wanted to do more. She wanted more for women all around the world, especially in the UK, especially for her daughters. So she joined lots of groups, all campaigning for the right for women to vote. And she met lots of influential people like Millicent Fawcett. But all of these groups differed in opinions about what sort of women should be allowed to vote. Older women, richer women, oh, surely all of these women, right? So Emily made her own group. She called it the Women's Franchise League and it was dedicated to getting the vote for all women, whether they were married or not. She invited and hosted meetings at her own home, inviting the very important people People who like to discuss, to argue, to question, to think about change. In 1989, news broke that New Zealand's women had won the right to vote, becoming the first self-governing country to do so. Yes! The UK? No, nothing much had changed there. No, it would be another three years and still no change. So Emmeline took things into her own hands. She decided they need a different kind of change. Deeds, not words. She founded a new group called the Women's Social and Political Union. It only allowed women members and it focused on direct action. The women in this group were known as the suffragettes. They started rallying crowds to promote votes for women. <laughs> they signed petitions Vote and they gained women. support. But the government was just not Vote listening. So the suffragettes voted louder women. and they protested right Vote outside the parliament gates. Now the police were forced to disperse this unwelcome crowd of women, but they just kept on coming back. Now things got heated. Women started to be arrested for obstruction or trespassing or just even being present at a protest for women's rights. And women started fighting back, which got them more into trouble. And jail was not a pretty place to be. It was dark, it was dingy, it was unpleasant, it was infested by rats and the food, what little you got of it, was plain and disgusting and if you didn't eat it, you were force fed it. Emmeline was arrested seven times and she told one court, We are not here because we are law breakers. We are here in our efforts to become law makers. In 1914, World War One broke out and everybody's lives changed. Families waved goodbye to fathers and sons as they went off to fight. Factories lost workers and faced closure. Emily called all her supporters to unite. She halted all the protests. 
and women went off to work replacing the men. Emmeline urged all her supporters to support the government and stand against the German peril. The war lasted four long and terrible years, but when it ended in 1918, women over the age of 30 who owned property won and were granted the right to vote. Yes! It was a small victory, but it was a step in the right direction. Emmeline's dream was coming true. She continued fighting with her daughters by her side to win the vote for all women. And 10 years later, in 1928, they did it. All women have the right to vote. Sadly, Emmeline died a few weeks before the announcement, but her lifelong work was not in vain, and she's amongst the pioneering legends of our time. You must make women count as much as men. You must have an equal standard of morals, and the only way to enforce that is through giving women political power. It is the only way. Emmeline Pankhurst's dedication and determination to gain the right for women to vote in the UK changed my life. Her story impacted history for the better. Emmeline Pankhurst is one of the many female figures that I celebrate and remember on the 8th of March every year for International Women's Day. On this day, I make these suffragette friendship bracelets you can learn to make these too and learn what the suffragette colours mean in my next video. But for now, it's bye bye. And remember, dream big, aim high, and maybe one day you'll change the world.